it's good to be here. Uh, it's great to meet you, Pothole. I have to say, when I first came on YouTube and I saw your series uh, with the uh, Creationist Award, the Dumb Creationist Awards, I was so tempted to come on YouTube as a creationist just so I could win one because it was so impressive the way you just showed them up. So. For, those that, for those that may not be aware, we will put uh, links in the description when this uh, video is posted onto YouTube, but um, perhaps you just want to explain briefly what the Golden Crocoduck Award is for, Potola. That's a good point. Yeah. Yes. yes, the Golden Crocoduck Award is, is awarded every year on the feast of uh, St. Jude Thaddeus, who is the patron saint of lost causes, very appropriately, and um, it is given for the biggest breach of the Ninth Commandment in pursuit of the creation of its cause. And if you want to look up what the Ninth Commandment is, I'm actually appalled at how few people understand, you know, biblical references that I put into my, my bids. But, um, but it, the breach of the Ninth Commandment in pursuit of the creation's cause, and it's given for the biggest bullshit, basically. Uh, in pursuit of the creation of course, not necessarily for the biggest bullshitter. I think it's um, uh, it's in its fourth year now. Who have been the previous? It winners? is, isn't it? Uh, we had uh, obviously Kent Hovind won the first year. That that was that was a given. Then we had um, Ray Comfort. What's happened to Kent Hovind? He's still in jail. <laughs> I know. Yeah, Did, as far as I yeah, know. Can I can I just ex very briefly explain a, a funny story? We wanted to get uh, Eric Hovind on the show uh, a, a month or so ago. And um, I'd sent him a couple of messages and I hadn't got a response. So I ended up phoning up his organization in America. And I was talking to Thunder on Skype at the time, uh, but I had muted him. Um, and as they answered the phone, I said, uh, could I please, please speak to uh, Kent Hovind? And the poor woman at the reception desk or whatever said, uh, oh, I'm sorry, he's not available. Thunder at this stage was desperately typing in the Skype chat, it's Eric, it's not Kent. And I kept up, I said, well, when, when will he be back? When is a good time to call? <laughs> and she didn't go as far as say, oh, well, about 2015, you might be able to get him. But anyway, I'm sorry. Funny story. I thought it was funny. Back to you, Pop. Yeah, yeah so, so then I think the following year we had um, uh, Nephilim Free. And last year, of course, was ended in a debacle because of the uh, yes, eligibility. The banana Man. Who did I have? Banana Man. Yes, that was that was uh, Comfort, Ray Comfort. Ray Comfort. Yes. Yeah, I mentioned him. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, and Amina Kin, of course, who um, I took out because she she was no longer eligible under what my own rules, and I did say that look, she she repented, she removed the video, she accepted she'd made a mistake. And, uh, you know, I've, I've used these rules before. It happened with Stone Commander once when um, the original award, which is a separate award, which is in, uh, for the question uh, asked in the arrogant belief that there's no possible answer, was, was originally the Stone Commander Award. Uh, that's now become the cock in, in honor of uh, another YouTuber because Stone Commander accepted that he made a mistake. And, and if you admit that what you've done is through error uh, or stupidity, uh, and you're not lying, then then you're not eligible for a golden crocodile. And but when this happened, there was a huge outcry, and all kinds of accusations that I'd sold out. Um, I think because she was a Muslim, and um, you know, it, this has never happened before when when I've done the same thing for Christians. But anyway, that that was the outcome, and I said, look, if it's going to be so much of a fight over this, I don't want to run the award because it's supposed to be for fun. I actually very came came, came very close to even. You know, scrapping the idea because I thought it's not something that should be the 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 center of acrimony. It should just be something that's fun, and uh, you know that that's why I do it. But anyway, a lot of people uh, wrote in and they said that they really wanted the awards. To well, continue. I so, think it's, so it's going on. Fun, yeah. and I would positively encourage you to continue with it, and I'm sure most of the people watching on Blog TV would say the Actually, same. Just, uh, just the sorry, Thunder, we'll go to you quickly, but. Then we still don't know what uh, Puka's question is. Back to you, Thunder, Question. and then to Puka. It was that there are many who still are widely of the belief that um, you and Amenekin had actually come to some sort of agreement um, <laughs> and that that was the end of the matter and that I was clumping in with my size 14s and completely ruined everything. Uh, now, what was the story on that again? Okay, I can tell you that there was no agreement. I couldn't even get to the bottom of it. I got these emails. I'll tell you what it was. We, we got a lot of very racist um, 
uh, emails uh, coming through. I, I, I don't think I can even say what they were, but I, but I, um, uh, there, there were some that were clearly very racist. There were some that, that were advocating uh, the mass slaughter of Muslims, and some really hateful stuff was going on. Now, in the meantime, I've been in touch with Amina Kin because uh, I wanted to get this result. She had, she had flagged my videos. I wanted her to unflag them and get YouTube to restore them, and she refused to do that. So we were communicating all this time, trying to get this done. And um, anyway, it transpired that she'd been getting a lot of these abusive ones as well. And we both agreed, it was our one area of agreement, that this is totally unacceptable. Um, and so we decided, well, look, what, what a statement it would be if we produced a joint video. So despite our acrimony, we are jointly opposed to this kind of racism and this kind of categorization of Muslims. Um, I, uh, you know, if it was against the Muslim faith, I had no problem with that. You can criticize it as much as you like. But once you start calling uh, Muslim sand and a word that begins with N, um, I, I say yes, but this is purely racist. So I thought people would uh, say, well, you know, we, but we're behind you, we agree. You know, this racism has no place in a discussion of religion. And yet I got all these complaints about how I caved in. I guess because I had um, dared to be communication with her and make a joint video on this. And there were even a lot of people that said, um, yeah, but attacking Islam is not being racist. And you were willing to go r right down to the wire on actually uh, legally resolving this, as in you were actually willing to go to court over this one now. I, I was indeed. And uh, in fact, DPR, I think uh, you probably know the Thunderfoot and I were in uh, communication over this. And, and Thunder, thanks again. He, he, you were a great help in getting this result resolved because of direct communication with YouTube and and advising me on how to go on this. Uh, it took a lot of effort on my part. I got in touch with um, a legal firm in Seattle uh, to, to take this to court and it would have meant I would have had to fly to the United States to do it. Um, and we were looking at how much money this would cost, perhaps starting up a fund. I, I, I don't get the idea that this was caving in. Uh, I was fighting this all the way. It wasn't so much in the end that I was fighting Amina Kin. Um, I think, to be honest, she's a, maybe a little bit dipsy and, a, and, and she didn't understand exactly what she was doing. She just thought, you're using my likeness and my, my videos and you're not allowed to do that. She didn't understand the legal ramifications. But YouTube did understand. It should have known better. And, uh, and it was YouTube that, in, in the end, I was up against. And, no, uh, I, I had a very brief exchange with her in, uh, in PM because I did a video on her as well. The impression I got from what I saw of her website and, and the video she had originally done was that she had done that video more really as a marketing move. I mean, I don't know if she was a true believer on that issue or not, but uh, she sold a particular type of headscarf or something, and she was building a a base, a customer base in the Islamic market. So I think that's why she initially was willing to back off it. But she also struck me as not very, like you said, she seemed a bit ditzy, not very business savvy. Yeah. So, uh, and it was unfortunate the way the whole thing went. But that's, it's, you see, it's interesting. It comes back to your original point and how you, you should uh, only look at the facts and not at possibly uh, the motivation behind a person and why they do it, like with Moncton. But, uh, uh, and I was going to ask you how, how often you get overlap with that, for example, uh, like you do have to actually, when you do what you do, you do research somewhat their motivations, right? Even if you don't discuss it in the actual video or in the piece you're writing, that does come up, right? Uh, I, I can have a guess at their motivations because it, 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 it's difficult not to understand, for example, when Moncton's doing a lecturing tour, uh, who's financing it and, and uh, understanding his personality to understand why he's doing it. The reason that I don't bring this up is because it detracts the argument. You know, when, yeah. uh, again, it's like my experience of doing interviews. Um, I've done hundreds of interviews with, with, with politicians and people. They will always try and steer the issue away from your line of questioning. When your line of questioning is specific and factual and getting down to the nitty gritty, they try to move it on to something else. And I think we're in danger of doing that. Um, every time we start questioning whether or not Moncton has the right to the title Lord, whether he's a member of the House of Lords, whether he should be using the crest. These are all legitimate questions if you're in the area of politics, but if you're in the area of science, um, I don't want that conversation to lead in that direction. If you put out five points 
Four of them are on the issues of science, and one of them is about his title. Guess which one the other guys are going to pick up on? They're not, they don't want to talk about science. So they will only go yes. into the issues of, of you know, uh, but, you know, therefore, if that's an ad hominem, you're attacking the man. Now, it was interesting that, that when I went to What's Up With That um, and wrote that piece for them, um, no one could accuse me of an ad hominem attack there. There wasn't a single ad hominem in there. And yet I got accused of ad hominem attacks. But, but the point is that, that I could hold my head up and have the moral high ground. I was attacking his ideas, his facts, and showing where the facts were wrong. And, um, and that was certainly something he didn't do with me. So I, I think we mustn't lead ourselves into attacking things that are irrelevant, because as soon as we do that, then the other, the other side will, will immediately take that and fly with it. Yeah, I want to say something about that, too, about, about Aminikin. I, mean, I was disappointed in her when she, she steps into this venue, you in, into our playing field, as it were, and she makes these claims and all of us jump onto it because we're practiced at it. This is the field that we that we deal, delve in. And she's, she's what is she sells cosmetics? And headscarves. Right, and, and that's it. And, that's, and, and you were talking about her earlier about other people, and I, and I don't want to sit here and say bad things about her, but she's, she was obviously completely out of her field when she made this comment. And I don't, you know, other, you, you're, you're talking about a small world. Right, and yeah. she'd stepped into, into what I consider to be a much larger one, and obviously wasn't ready to go swimming in the deep water and j jump back in. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, yeah, I, I, I think that's true. Uh, I, I think, I think it was a one-off video she made. All the others were about scarves and and cosmetics. Yes. I wouldn't even have touched her if someone hadn't nominated her. They nominated her. It was a funny video. I thought, great, and she's said something that is clearly wrong, and she's promoting. A book by Harun Yahya, which is which, which great. I have the chance to um, have a go at. So it was a legitimate target. I I think she was not prepared for the fact that this would lead to all the criticism. She certainly wasn't prepared for all the racial and uh, pornographic abuse that she got. There, she was really yes, stunned that was by that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's but, more than unfortunate. The fact that a lot, the fact that any of that came from the side that that you know likens itself to rationalism. You know, and and higher lofty ideals is extremely disturbing to me. Disturbing. Yeah, um, I, I think you've got to accept that this is part of the course for behavior of people online. It's like road rage. When you decouple people from being in the same room, they they behave differently. And yeah, you know, the old uh, saying that maybe epitomizes anonymous is because you know, none of us are as cruel as all of us. And whether you like it or not, that's the sort of nature of mankind online. 